gentlemen, please take your seats. The ceremony will begin shortly. We ask that you silence all electronic devices and conceal your security badges for the duration of the ceremony. In consideration of others, we ask that you not obstruct the view of other guests while taking pictures. If there is a need for medical assistance during the ceremony, there is a first aid station behind you to your left. In the unlikely event that we must evacuate the area, please move into Marshall Hall in an orderly manner using either the force comm or the USARC entrances. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Marshall Hall, headquarters of United States Army Forces Command. Today, General Daniel B. Allen, Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command, will relinquish command as he passes the colors to General Raymond T. Odierno, the 38th Chief of Staff of the Army and host for today's ceremony. General Odierno will then transfer the colors to General Mark A. Milley, who will assume command. We would like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests who are joining us for this special occasion. Ms. Linda Odierno, Ms. Debbie Allen, and the Allen's daughter, Danielle. General Allen's brother, Mr. Rob Allen, and his wife, Katie. Mrs. Allen's cousins, Mrs. Terry Clay and her husband, Brian, and their daughter, Katie. And Mrs. Amy Cameron and her husband, Brian. Mrs. Holly Ann Milley, and the Millie's children, Mary and Peter. Her father, Mr. Robert Haas, and his wife, Marcia. Her sister, Mrs. Amy Bogarts, and her husband, Scott, and their sons, Nick and Jake. Her uncle, Mr. James Haas, and her aunt, Miss Carol Haas. General Milley's aunt, the Honorable Nat Robertson, Mayor of Fayetteville. Mr. Tony Tata, Secretary of Transportation for the State of North Carolina. Lieutenant General Charles T. Cleveland, Commanding General United States Army Special Operations Command, and his wife, Mary Ann. Mrs. Beth Anderson, wife of Lieutenant General Joseph Anderson, Commanding General, 18th Airborne Corps, who is currently deployed. Lieutenant General Raymond A. Thomas III, Commander, Joint Special Operations Command, and his wife, Barb. Command Sergeant Major Chris Greca, United States Central Command. Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder, United States Army Forces Command, and his wife, Marla. Senior military and civilian leaders, mentors, friends, thank you for honoring us with your presence. United States Army Forces Command, or FORCECOM, is the largest command in the United States Army, and it is the Army's force provider to combatant commanders worldwide. The command trains, mobilizes, deploys, sustains, transforms, and reconstitutes conventional forces, providing relevant and ready land power in defense of the nation, both at home and abroad. Forces Command tailors the resources and training of its units to meet The music for today's ceremony is performed by the Army Ground Forces Band under the direction of their commander and conductor, Captain Day Kim. The color guard is from the United States Army Forces Command 
and United States Army Reserve Command and is being led by Master Sergeant James L. Proctor II. The Salute Battery is from Bravo Battery, 3rd Battalion, 319th Airborne Field Artillery Regiment and is led by First Lieutenant John Girton and Sergeant First Class Jameson Stukes. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for honors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you join me. In the high ideals that you. He's up and prepared to lead at such a time in, in our nation's history. Today, we honor two great leaders. First, I give thanks for the exemplary servant leadership of General Allen provided forces command during his season of command. A time that was marked with unprecedented challenge and change, he, with your divine help and strength, provided calm and steady visionary direction to ensure that our I ask your blessing on his gracious Allen assumes his new role and responsibility as Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. Father, we thank you that this May your divine presence and blessings accompany General Milley as he assumes the leadership role as he's in this change of command ceremony today. Bless our nation, the men and women in uniform, our civilians and family members who stand with them. Keep the lamp of liberty burning bright and our army strong. I humbly ask and pray these things in your holy and mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, this time a bouquet of red roses is being presented to Mrs. Debbie Allen by Sergeant First Class Shanita Grant. A single red rose will also be presented to the Allen's daughter, Danielle. Red roses farewell them with love and appreciation for their many contributions to the command and the community during their tenure here at Fort Bragg. Yellow roses are now being presented to Miss Holly Ann Milley by Captain Carrie Charlo. A single yellow rose will also be presented to their daughter, Mary, and a coin will be presented to their son, Peter. Yellow roses and the coin welcome Miss Milley, Mary, and Peter with joy and friendship to the command and the community.
Sergeant First Class Jameson Stukes is presenting General Allen a shell casing to commemorate this occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, General Odierno will now conduct the change of command ceremony. <coughs> In a time-honored tradition, General Allen will pass the organization's colors to the host, General Odierno, who will then pass them to General Milley. They will be assisted by Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder, United States Army Forces Command. Under the provisions of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of United States Army Forces Command. Signed, Mark A. Milley, General, United States Army, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the 38th Chief of Staff of the United States Army, General Raymond T. Odierno. Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for turning out today. It's really incredible to see so many people here. It's always a special treat for me to come down here to Fort Bragg is inspiring to me because of all the great soldiers and leaders that are here every single day representing our entire army, whether it be our special operations forces, our conventional forces, our support forces, our headquarters. This is the one place in the army you get to see a total picture of who we are and what we are. So for me, it, it's always a great pleasure. Today is a true day of celebration as we celebrate the great extraordinary leadership of Dan Allen and General Mark Milley and all of the soldiers of Force, Forces Command. Now, I do realize that leaving Fort Bragg and going to Pentagon might not have been on Dan Allen's dream sheet, but it is a great day for us in the Army today because we're getting a great leader to be the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. And many of you might not know, but it so happens that today is, in fact, the Allen's 27th wedding anniversary. We want to congratulate both of you. Congratulations. <laughs> and of course, they will celebrate their anniversary in a traditional Army way. They will jump in their car, they will drive to Fort McNair, and they will start unloading their housing go household goods so they can get ready for the next job. So this would be like probably many other anniversaries uh, that you've both celebrated, but thank you both. As I stand here today, it reminds me of the strength of the American soldier. Our soldiers are the best in the world. And that is evident every day as I get a chance to watch them in the many duties that they accomplish around the world. And I want to thank the Army Ground Forces Band today, who's led by Captain Kim. Appreciate everything that you all do. Master Sergeant Proctor and the Color Guard, I want to thank you from Force Comm and the Army Reserves. I want to thank the Sloop Battery, Lieutenant General John Girton and Sergeant First Class Jameson Stukes. Thank you for your great leadership and what you represent and all the great soldiers. I want to thank all the community guests that are here, that are here to recognize the importance of this day as we change a heavy responsibility of command in Forces Command. I want to specifically recognize General Lindsay. Sir, great to see you again. Thank you so much for being here, as always. I want to thank uh, General Kernan, sir. Thank you, as well, for being here. You represent those who train many of us, both of you. And many of us have great, re great responsibility because of the great leadership that you both gave us over the years. So I want to thank you both. Thank you very much.
I want to recognize Charlie Cleveland, the commander of the U.S. Army Special Operations Command. Charlie, thank you for everything that you do, and his wife, Mary Ann. I want to thank Beth Anderson. Beth, I don't know where you are, but it's great to see you. Thanks for everything that you do, and uh, as you represent uh, your husband and everything, all our soldiers that are currently deployed, it's always great to see you, Beth. Thank you. Uh, General Ray Thomas, Commander of Joint Special Operations, Commander his wife, Barbara Ray, it's always great to see you. Thank you and congratulations. I haven't had a chance to see you since you took command. We're very proud of you as well, so thank you very much. And I want to recognize Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder. Command Sergeant Major, thank you for your leadership and everything that you do every day as a senior enlisted soldier of Forces Command. I appreciate everything that you do. We always talk about the strength of our soldiers as our families and our business involves our families. We cannot do what we do without the steadfast support from them. This is especially true from the Allen and Millie families and I'm honored to welcome them here today. Dan is joined by his wife Debbie and their daughter Daniela who's a senior at the University of North Carolina and just returned from a summer in Africa. Uh, their son, Joss, is a junior at West Point, and uh, he's being kept busy doing those things cadet officer and leaders do, getting ready for new academic year. Mark is joined by his lovely wife, Holly Ann, and their two children, Mary, uh, who graduated from Holy Cross and works in uh, Washington, D.C. for British Petroleum, and Peter, who's a senior at Georgetown. These are two great Army families who represent what's best about our families and everything they do to support their husbands and fathers. So I thank you very much. Let's please give them a round of applause. Since World War II, Force Com has been at the forefront of ensuring our soldiers, leaders, and units were ready when needed. And today, this responsibility is no different. The training, equipping, and readiness of more than 270,000 active component soldiers in partnership with over 350,000 Army National Guard and nearly 200,000 U.S. Army Reserve soldiers is daunting. No other command in our Army influences as many soldiers as Forces Command. It is by far the largest and most diverse command that we have in our Army. In addition to generating forces to deploy worldwide, they are also responsible for unit soldier and family readiness within the continental United States. The mission of this command is complex and challenging. It impacts training, readiness, and operations throughout our Army, whether here or abroad while deployed. And I think we all know as we stand here today, we're at a critical juncture in our nation's history. We are experiencing a time of fiscal constraint, worldwide uncertainty, and the continuous evolution of warfare. This is also occurring while we transition from 13 years of conflict. We're drawing down the force. We're confronting emerging and evolving threats. And Forces Command has and will play a crucial role in guarding, guiding our Army into the future in implementing new readiness concepts, doctrine, providing ready forces. All the challenges that we face are significant. But true leaders lead dynamic change. Dan Allen was one of those leaders, and Mark Milley is another one of those leaders. Dan Allen has commanded ForceCom brilliantly during the past 15 months, providing expert vision, care, and leadership. Whether generating forces in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, where as we stand here today, we have nearly 30,000 soldiers standing in harm's way, or to the Pacific Theater, to Africa, or to Yukon, Dan's efforts to provide capability to our combatant commanders has been on target, on time, for every mission when needed. Dan has also realized and started to drive home the importance of the total force, training and building interoperability, while improving our multi components expeditionary, and are able to uniquely tailor themselves 
to meet whatever future requirement our nation might need. Dan's experience, I'm commanded every echelon and in nearly every formation of our Army to include light, airborne, mechanized, ranger, and combined joint formations, whether it be in Iraq, Afghanistan, Haiti, Saudi Arabia, Panama, Grenada. These experiences position him well and give him the right background to be the 35th Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. The challenges of the Pentagon require candor, patience, team building, and a thorough knowledge of the joint Army and interagency framework, which we're going to have to operate in the future. It requires strong but balanced leadership, and it requires commitment and character. This is why Dan Allen will flourish as the Vice Chief of Staff for the Army. Debbie, I want to thank you for your lifetime of support and dedication. You've been unwavering in your support of our soldiers, their families, and every duty station where they have lived. The Fort Bragg community will greatly miss the compassion and care you provided by all the volunteer work you've done, whether it be with Girl Scouts, Army Family Advocacy, the Red Cross, Cross, YMCA, etc. You've done just so much. And you've done this by being a great mom and a great wife. So thank you so much again. As Dan and Debbie move to the nation's capital, Force Com and Fort Bragg have the privilege of welcoming Mark and Holly Ann Milley. Like Dan, Mark Milley has commanded every echelon and brings with him a wealth of experience. Most recently, Mark has served as the Commanding General Three Corps in Fort Hood, where he led soldiers in Afghanistan as a senior operational commander. His hard work and decisive leadership exponentially improved the Afghan Army and has prepared them as they've taken over full responsibility. And more recently, Mark has led Fort Hood through the trials of a recent tragedy. Both him and Holly Ann united a community and brought hope and assurance to soldiers and their families. And they both provided a great example to command teams and families across our Army on how you lead during difficult times. Holly Ann has served as a registered nurse for more than 30 years while still finding time to volunteer thousands of hours to clubs, organizations, and spousal groups. She's an incredible role model for all with her strength, kindness, and selflessness. Holly Ann, thank you so much for all that you've done and for what I know you'll continue to do to support here this great community here at Fort Bragg. Mark's distinguished career of service brings him back to Fort Bragg where he began as a lieutenant in the 82nd Airborne Division in 1981. Welcome back, Mark. Our Den Street has probably changed a little bit since then, as well as the rest of Fort Bragg. After his first assignment, he deployed to Egypt and Panama, to Haiti and Bosnia, to Iraq and Afghanistan. And as I said earlier, he's led at all levels of command, from company to corps. He has an acute understanding of the requirements of our combatant commanders, of the capabilities they need. He also understands the program and processes that it'll take to make sure our Army meets those needs. Mark is the absolute right officer to lead this great command and I know that he will help us to meet the uncertainties that we face. Your time at Force Com will both be both challenging and rewarding. Maintaining sustainable readiness in the face of force and budget reductions. Developing an effective total force policy. But I believe this is a time when we will reach forward. And once again, people will understand the importance of this great army of ours. Great vision and energy but most of all, your great leadership that will help guide our soldiers every single day. ...as ever known. And as you know, we are incredibly fortunate to have incredible men and women ...themselves to the mission. It is our duty as senior leaders to ensure they are prepared. And we must provide them the leaders who are competent, who are committed to their mission, and demonstrate 
the right character. And Mark, I know you understand this, and you will do all you within your power to achieve success. Best of luck to you and Holly Ann, to the great soldiers, civilians, and great day for our Army as we take a step forward. I'm blessed to be here, and I'm blessed to be in the presence of such great soldiers. The strength of our nation is our Army. The strength of our Army is our soldiers. The strength of our soldiers is our families, and that's what makes us Army strong. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, General Daniel B. Allen. Don't worry, Mark, I'll get this lowered for you, since I know you uh, about as vertically challenged as I am. Good afternoon and welcome, family and friends, to United States Army Forces Command and Fort Bragg. What a gorgeous day here at the center of, of the universe. Gorgeous to find as about 10 degrees cooler, a little less humid, and a little less likely for an afternoon shower. Thank you for being here and for sharing in this big day with uh, Team Millie and Team Allen. General Odierno, Chief and Linda, thank you for your kind words and for your decisive leadership of America's Army during this historic period of transition and change. General Milley, Mark, I want to again welcome you and Holly Ann back to Fort Bragg. And while many parts of this post have changed since your last tour here, I'm sure you'll find Team Bragg's warrior ethos and expeditionary spirit as strong as ever. I share the Chief's welcome and sentiment to public officials, other distinguished guests, Command Sergeants Major, non-commissioned officers, soldiers, and civilians of Forces Command and the Team Bragg community. Thanks for your continued service and dedication to our Army. To the community leaders of the Cape Fear region, to inspire. Debbie and I are grateful for your partnership, your friendship, and for your continued support to our Army and locally here to the Fort Bragg community. The Army Ground Forces Band, the Salute Battery, and the Color Guard, as always, you represent all of Forces Command magnificently, along with the thousands of dedicated soldiers who fill the ranks of our Army, many currently serving in harm's way in Afghanistan and other dangerous places around the globe. Most our soldiers, civilians, and Army families. Truly, they are the strength of our nation and our Army. They make the sacred honor of leading a pure joy. They continue to bear the brunt of the nation's service with grace, humility, confidence, and professionalism. Debbie, it all started for us here at Fort Bragg. In 29 years, two wonderful children, and numerous adventures later, you are still the very best of Team Allen. Thank you for the time, care, and compassion you've given straight from the heart to our Army families and scores of teammates across the United States and beyond. On this, our anniversary, thank you for an epic run with another chapter about to begin. Above all, thank you for saying yes when we got connected on that blind date for the first time and for every yes since, and for every shared incredible experience. I could not and would not be here without you. <clears throat> to our daughter Danielle, just returned from another internship in Africa, your example is an inspiration to us all. Selfishly, we're glad you're back home in Carolina. And to our son Joshua up north, preparing for phase three of the campaign against the dean at West Point, your journey towards a soldier's life continues to inspire. You both continue to make us proud beyond words. And to Debbie's mom, who continues to be all in as the consummate Army wife and mom, and to Sante Ranger Pete, 
stay in overwatch. Dad, the terrain is about to get really tough for this ranger, so stay on point. While this ceremony is a change in leadership, it also tightens our focus on the command's mission to provide ready and responsive forces for our nation. It is a charge that demands the utmost from all who keep it. Our Army is blessed with this Force Comm team, active, reserve, and National Guard, and civilian professionals who keep this charge and deliver each and every day without pause. In the face of economic uncertainty, this team helped mitigate the substantial risk to readiness through innovation within available resources, buffering the impact on our soldiers, civilians, and families. This agility built our readiness posture in 2014 and has postured us to increase that readiness into 2015. We've operationalized the Army's strategy to develop and mentor agile leaders prepared for the challenges of the uncertain global security environment. To meet the critical need for leader development, this team made the Army's leader development resources across the total force accessible to support the innovative work of our commanders across the total Army. Our leadership focus is simple. Develop leaders of character and competence will follow. Over the past year, this team strengthened relationships among all Army components, building momentum to achieve the Army Total Force Policy vision. Working with counterparts in the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve, our commanders focused on multi-component and multi-echelon training at our combat training centers and all our culminating training events. The unit partnerships underway across the total force are building habitual, geographically based, and mutually supportive leader development, training, and readiness gains for our Army. Thanks to the great teamwork of Lieutenant General Charlie Cleveland and the United States Army Special Operations Command, our conventional and special operations forces interdependence gets stronger daily as we maximize the mutual benefit of every possible training repetition with realistic and challenging scenarios. The Force Comp team and its exemplary primary staff delivered this and more. And I'm thankful for the counsel and friendship of our Deputy Commanders, Chiefs, our irreplaceable Command Sergeants Major, and all who serve and lead this incredible team of professionals. To our exemplary leaders, and particularly the exceptional military and civilian leaders across the Force Comm staff, thanks for your hard work, incredible dedication, and the inspiring example you provide across the command. I owe you a debt I'll spend a long time trying to buy down. But as we know, our progress depends on the hardworking soldiers and civilians who develop and produce the plans, policies, and programs that keep our units trained and ready and that keep our Army running. Our success as a team is a direct reflection on the outstanding efforts and leadership of our corps, divisions, and brigades across all components. They achieve because they are professionals. They achieve because they, along with the fine soldiers they lead, understand the implicit requirements that accompany the defense of this great nation. These elements continue to train and deploy to conduct operations in Afghanistan, the Balkans, Africa, Jordan, the Republic of Korea, and scores of vital regions in desperate need of security and stability. Their daily achievements reflect admirably on the championship caliber professionalism of our Army. General Mark Milley will lead this team to the next level. A proven leader in combat and at home, General Milley stands with clear eyes and steady hands leading through adversity with rare resilience and uncommon courage. Mark brings the optimal combination of intellect, personality, and vision that will elevate this team to mission success. And it's a good thing, because I've heard the next Army Vice is going to lead really hard on Forces Command. Also, rumor has it he's quite the hockey player. So, KK, you better alert the garrison commander not to consider the hockey rink as a bill player for future budget cuts. We're currently in a unique, albeit fleeting, period in history where we can influence real change in our Army. We recognize that our Army's strength is its people. Our critical advantage remains the commitment, competence, and is our decisive.
will sustain our daily walk, define us as we apply them, and assure our legacy to those who follow. 2015 will bring challenges. However, all members of the team are united in the shared commitment to deliver decisive land forces to the joint team. So as Debbie and I move on to what is next, we are thankful that Mark and Holly Ann Millie are here to build momentum with Team ForceCom. To serve as ForceCom's commanding general is a singular humbling honor that can never be duplicated. On behalf of the Allen family, we thank you and we wish you all the best in the endeavors that lie ahead. Freedom's Guardian, Army Strong, Freedom Six Ancient, out. And for expressing uh, your confidence and trust and support uh, in me to take command of what is, I think, the uh, Army's most significant and most important uh, command, the command that I've been in the entire time I've been in the Army. Uh, so thank you, sir. Uh, those days remain silent. But I will tell you that General Lindsay uh, was a personal inspiration to me as a second lieutenant, uh, and he remains an inspiration not only to me. And there's a lot of uh, old friends that traveled, and those of you who were in the promotion ceremony, I singled some of you out uh, by name. I've got friends here from uh, high school, distant uh, past, uh, teammates uh, from uh, college hockey days, uh, high school friends from college football or uh, high school football. Uh, I've got uh, my roommates from college are here, uh, lots of family, uh, NCOs uh, when I was in fifth group here, uh, Ranger School buddies uh, like Tony Thomas uh, are here, fellow company commanders. Uh, I've got some uh, friends uh, who have served with me over the years in the 7th Division, the 10th Mountain Division, uh, the 20th into is now the Deputy Commanding General of Force Com. Uh, but thanks to all of you. I'm not going to single you all out uh, by name right now, but uh, thanks to all of you. I know some of you traveled a great distance. Uh, I think the furthest comes from Calgary, Canada, Calgary, Alberta. Uh, but thanks to all of you uh, for coming. Uh, none of this would be happening without your continued support over the last of America's only armored corps. Uh, and that was a great experience. And then one afternoon, uh, General O called me, and he said, congratulations, uh, you're going to go back. Is it that? Uh, but uh, I will give it all, my get all I have, sir, uh, for you, for the Army, for all of the soldiers. And I pledge to you uh, my heart, my soul, and my sacred honor uh, for the United States Army and in this command. And I will live up to your expectations. And I can say that on behalf of Sergeant Major Schroeder uh, as well. It's here at Bragg that I began my career as a platoon leader in the 82nd uh, and then later as a Special Forces uh, team leader. And it's here at Bragg that I have so many fond memories. And really, it's here at Bragg that I fell uh, into love with the two loves of my life, the Holly Ann. And I have nothing but great memories uh, from uh, Fort Bragg. And the Millie family is really excited uh, to be back here. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the great military and civilian staff of Forces Command, all those of the surrounding communities in the Cape Fear region uh, that have welcomed uh, Holly and I and Peter and Mary over the last several years, and Deb and Dan Allen. Uh, what do you say to a guy that you've been with since we were lieutenants on our Den Street? And yes, our Den Street has changed. But what hasn't changed is Dan Allen. Uh, Dan Allen was the best lieutenant in the entire 82nd Airborne Division uh, back in the early 80s, and I can tell you right now he's the best general we got. So thanks, Dan, for being a lifelong friend. Uh, thanks for your service, for your sacrifice, and doing a great job here at ForceCom. And I have no doubt uh, that you're going to be one of the greatest vice chiefs of staff that our Army has ever had. Uh, the greatest thing about Dan going to be the vice, though, is he's going to bring some balance. Uh, and it's about time we got some balance up there at the big Army. So as you know, uh, General Odinero has been a long, lifelong fan of the New York Yankees. Now, we're not sure why that is. Um, perhaps he's from northern New Jersey or something like that. But finally, we're going to get a member of the Red Sox Nation up there in the head shed and to add a little bit of balance. So thanks, Dan, for doing that. And it's a great honor to be reunited uh, once again with Scott Schroeder and his wife, uh, Marla. It's only been a couple of weeks since I said goodbye to him at Fort Hood. But really, uh, what he is, it, in my mind, is the epitome of a great NCO. He's a personification of what it means to be a sergeant, uh, and he is Army. 
uh, today. So thanks, our Major, for uh, doing what you've done throughout your entire career and doing what you're doing uh, here at Forces Command. And over the fat past 13 Forces Command, United States Army's majority, 80, 90 percent of all in Iraq and indeed on contingency operations around the world. And there are people out there today who tell you wars can be fought and won from the publicly, I'll say it under oath, I'll say it any day of the week. They are wrong. Wars are fought where people live and people live on the Earth's surface. And wars are won by armies, Marines, Navy SEALs, in the mud, on the Earth, and closing with and destroying the enemies of our country. And they are won by tough, hard, resolute professionals. And that's the job of Forces Command. It is our job to train, to mobilize, and to provide those forces to our nation's wars. It is our job to provide superbly led, lethal, adaptive leaders in this job of defending our country and defending our Constitution. And to General O and to our nation, I guarantee you that Force Commander who stormed the beaches and the assault waves at Kwajalein and Saipan at Tinian and Iwo Jima with the Fourth selfless service is to them that taught me service to the nation. It is them who taught me hard work. And it's to them, my mother, my father, and to all the families of our soldiers that I pledge my honor, my soul, my blood, my sweat, and my tears to make sure that not a single soldier, Ann, the lights of my life, Peter, and my daughter, Mary, who drove 1,300 miles, Peter did, from Texas to here, and my daughter, who flew all the way in from Alaska last night. To you, you are a great example of an Army family. Thanks for your service and sacrifice over so many years, so many schools, and so many deployments. You all continue to make me proud. And to all of FORSCOM, you make me proud, and all the policies and existing orders remain in effect. Army strong, freedom's guardian. Retire the colors, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the departure of the colors and the singing of the Army song. and join us in the Forcecom lobby to congratulate General and Mrs. Milley and enjoy refreshments in the joint atrium. Thank you for attending today's ceremony, Freedom's Guardian.